I'm going to quote Ruben Navarrete. He's a columnist and a journalist. He summed it up so nicely, and thank you, Rick, for pointing this to me, because I have, so, I have a ton of content about Latinx. There's way so much, even news. You can just Google it today, and you'll find something else in some magazine and newspaper and all that. So in the 1940s, we were Mexican. By the 1950s, heroic deeds in World War II, we earned the right, we thought, to be Mexican-American. In the 1960s, we became Chicano. Hey, think of uh, Woodstock and uh, Carlos Santana and all that. And 1970s and 80s, Hispanic. And then, 1990s and 2000s, we became Latino. So that is a very fast movement through the decades. A year or two ago, I did a presentation where I, can, I showed you across time, across a century, the definition of white. There was a time when Italians were not white, Polish were not white, Jews were not white, Greeks, gosh, no white at all. So things keep changing. Life change, we change what we call, who we call, identity change, the way we ascribe to groups. Of course, over the decades, we can see this just the last part of the 20th century, how Latino has changed uh, over the years, Hispanic. What are we today? This is what he asked. What I'm, still, I'm still quoting Navarrete. Latinx is a catch-all, gender-neutral, LGBTQ-friendly term to unite, to make it more inclusive, but instead, it did, um, divided us even further. Only 3% of Latinos use the term and it's more popular with white liberals. That's what Ruben Navarrete says. And we're going to get a little deeper into this. We're going to see what some politicos say about this. So it's going to get exciting. Pass the Peptobismo. Spanish 101, you didn't pay for this, but you get a free Spanish class today because we're going to, part of the issue with Latinx is the Spanish language. You know, Spanish, language and culture go together, by the way. And actually, a nod to the comment today about people in their 20s or 30 who don't see, they're, they're colorblind, they don't see identity. That is true, it's absolutely true. The whole market is multicultural. And now, if you go to an ad agency in the Midwest versus either coast or, the, or Miami or Texas, the composition may be a little different. But younger people tend to speak more, more languages, tend to have traveled the world a little better, traveled in a different way, you not know, the classic mass tourism. So the, the cultural competence of the culture is changing, is improving, is getting better, and that's a good thing. It's becoming a multicultural market. So even though individual identity doesn't change, values, culture, attitudes do, uh, we have to track them and follow them. Spanish 101, what do we have here? Class, anyone? La niña. Anyone? Una niña, muy bien. Y ahora? Anyone? Dos Anyone? Dos niñas, muy bien. Tres niñas, correcto mundo. Now, now it's math, math class. Ocho niñas. Nueve niñas. Here comes the monkey wrench. Diez what? Diez niños. Look at the all there. That's the Spanish culture. If you ask somebody, oh, can you buy, let's back translate diez niños into Spanish. Ask a translator, interpreter. I'm a certified translator. I'm a copywriter, Spanish copywriter as well. That's most of what I do. Language is my, my game. So how do you back translate from English to Spanish, niños? They, they will ask you, well, what, what do you mean by 10 niños, 10 niños? Because it could be 10 children. That's the gender neutral version in English. Oh, let, give me that in Spanish. 10 niños, same as 10 boys. <laughs> That's it. That is, Spanish is a very sexist language. Now. Most languages in the world, German, Dutch, uh, Finnish, uh, you know, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, all the Latin languages have gender. Everything has a gender, so the chair, the table, the knife, the fork, the plate, everything is either masculine or feminine. So that's part of the context. The whole world is much more genderized than the English language, where you can be very neutral. In English, I can say, Oh, honey, I'm, I'm going to have coffee with a friend tomorrow. 
Okay, yeah. What if I say, oh, honey, I want to have friends with una amiga tomorrow. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I think I'm, I'm to say it in English instead. Because in Spanish, you have to tell the gender. You cannot say, there's no neutral for amigo, amiga, that's it. Some people want to say amigue. There's a whole trend of linguistic nonsense going on, I'm telling you. Okay, Hispanic. People say Hispanic, and some people say, well, why not her panic? You know, we're talking about Hispanic only. That's unfair. So, Latino and Latina, this is so commonly used, the Latino community, Latina, and the way in which we use these two, Hispanic and Latino or Latina, and, and in marketing, and my, my, my world is marketing, working for my, people who work in marketing, advertising agencies, and we say, when we talk shop, we talk about Hispanic marketing. The, two days ago, there was a great presentation online with the Hispanic Marketing Council, HM Hispanic, yeah, which used to be a ha, CMC, HMC now. We say Hispanic when we talk shop, Hispanic marketing, blah, blah, blah. If I'm talking to a, a head of PR, uh, uh, somebody who's going to talk to the, to the public, we don't say, oh, we love the Hispanic market. We'll say, we, they will say, we love the, his, the Latino community. So we change how what words we use based on how you so latino latina public facing latino latina talking shop hispanic that's one one way uh, in which we've used it latinat for about five minutes in the 2000s <laughs> people use latinat and guilty i'm guilty i'm one of them you know there are so many attempts over the years to try to be more inclusive to, to try to be not so machista or, or gender driven in spanish language latin I'll have for you a very short example of uh, a case study because that is that can be a solution to a gender-neutral situation. You could use the word the word Latin, that that could be potentially a, a solution for you. We're kind of getting ahead of ourselves because ahead of ourselves, we're talking about two separate things. And when people do research, and I even put Pew and and uh, you know people that we respect in research. Uh, think now, some of the research out there, I believe, there's some confirmation bias, but there's also not a differentiation of this. They go and say, what do you call yourself? That is different from the collective. What do you call the community? What do you call the Hispanic market or the Latin market or the whatever market, the Latin American market, the, the, the aggregate? They are different things. For example, in my case, self-identity. People could say, oh, he's an Argentine. Yeah, I'm Argentino. He's an Argentine-American. Yes, that's better because I'm not Argentine. When I go to Argentina, I'm a tourist. I live all my professional life in Europe and the US. I, am, I feel American. I'm American. I travel with an American passport for the last who knows how long. So American Latino, um, Hispanic, yes. So you could put a lot of labels on me. When you ask me, I say Latino American. This is why I love this publication. You know, here, here we have Latino American. Yeah. Today, the publication. By the way, we were talking about La Familia. This is Aguilar Productions. And uh, this, is, this is my identity. If I were to say Latino, uh, American Latino, maybe, to me, an American Latino is somebody who was born in the U.S., Latino, American Latino. That's why I say Latino American, not Latin American, because I don't live in Latin America. Although, when I go to Miami, I do. <laughs> but uh, but I, you know, I spend winters in Miami. That's the trick to living in Minnesota. You, you go to Miami for the winter or to Florida. December through March, that's it. The rest of the year, hurricane season and hot and humid. Latino American, that's my identity. I'm Sephardic Jewish. I'm all kinds of other labels. I can, you know, among all of us can decide, oh, I'm the da, 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 da. But this is my self-identity. If you ask me to, this, to describe the aggregate, the collective, I may use any of these terms depending on the context. I may say the Hispanic market, the Latino community, the Latina business community. Latinas are starting businesses at a rate way higher than any other group. Latin art in Minnesota, and Latinx. The younger your, your audience, your market, excuse, 
the more you're likely to use Latinx. And then if you have uh, young people, not only do they, you know, if you talk to 15 year olds today, 20 year olds, not only they'll say, you know, Latin, what do you mean? I'm, I'm an Asian American, whatever. No, I'm just a human being. Who wants to know? Who cares? You know? Oh, and then are you, are you male, female? Who wants to know? Who cares? I'm a human being. Latinx, we're talking about, and this is pointing to the non-binary world. For some people, the upcoming, for some people, they're already here. Non-binary world, there's a lot about this all over the world. And so, who wants to know I'm a human being? Male, female, non, and, and people who are 15 years old and 20 years old today, they have a lot of peers who are out being non-binary. Doesn't mean they are homosexual or gay or they may just be non-conforming, that's it. Uh, what is your sexual orientation? Ah, well, that's a specific question. None of your business, you know? <laughs> but identity, non-conforming, I don't care. I am against that, that kind of thing. And that's, this is why you can get an American passport today, as of this year, with an X instead of an M or an F. Ooh. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, the little girl talking to grandma and she's looking at grandma's driver's license and says, oh, grandma, no wonder grandpa divorced you. You got an F in sex. <laughs> X, I got an X in sex. So, all over the world, all of, you can get ID, you can get passports in Belgium. This is uh, Brazil, masculino, femenino, no specific gado. That's it. You can choose that when you get a passport in Brazil. And uh, the bottom line is that Latinx, in all this context of the non-binary world that is with us, if you're 50 years old, it's maybe out there. If you're 40, it's closer. The younger you are, the more it's around me and it's here. I believe in that. I'm non-conforming. I don't believe in putting people in boxes like that. So either, either ethnicity or anything else. So the idea that target by age, absolutely right. Because by age, you catch a lot of uh, psychographics, a lot of lifestyle indicators, so, and attitudes. This, as a writer, this is one reason why I think Latinx is not going to go. It's not going to work. Look at this. Latinxes, I better use my pointer, I have a cool pointer. Latinxes experience discrimination from other Latinxes at about the same rate as they from non-Latinxes. Oh. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. That is insane. So, LA Times. LA Times, <laughs> but that is, all, you know, do a search of this in .edu domains. Wow. <laughs> it's academia too, you know. And, a non-profit. This is Merriam-Webster. They added Latinx to the dictionary, but they said nobody thought about how to pronounce, and I would add to that, nobody thought about the plural of, of this word that they're coming up with. So my question and my thought is, this is the politicos, nobody in my office will use it. Ruben Gallego, Arizona. Uh, let's keep going then this is echoed by many people. That when Latino politicos use the term, it's to appease white, rich progressives who fund their campaigns, who think that is the term we use, vicious circle of confirmation bias. And this is, he's the only one saying that, this is representative. Of course, a couple of days ago, we say, no, some people, some people are saying, don't, Democrats, don't say, you have to use it. Don't refuse to use it. We should use the term. So there's a lot of infighting within the party about that. And uh, this is LULAC, a nonprofit. And I said, again, the same, same idea of uh, uh, the, the uh, academic, the ivory tower thinking is not with the people. One example of this, Latino college age, traditional college age in colleges, 18 to 22 were polled on this, and they used Latinx when in college. When they go back home, no, no, Latinx doesn't work here. Most of us, most people of any ethnicity, we can code switch, 
either language or just code switching. Code switching, oh, we all do it. You know, well, that's one of the first things I studied when I studied cultural anthropology way back. And I love the concept because it, it applies to, for example, let's say that I am, I'm in my home office and I'm playing with my dog. Ooh, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. The phone rings. Hello? I'm going to say, hello, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> it's a client. I'm going to say, hello, yes, oh yeah. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> code switching. We all code switch. A few years ago, I was part of uh, Jane uh, Elliott's uh, exercise on blue eye, brown eye exercise on racism and discrimination. And I heard black mothers say things like, oh, my kids know how to act black and act white. I can be with them in the, in the park. It's just us, me and my two kids are playing in the playgrounds and in the, in the games there. And then I see a white mother coming with her two white kids and my kids are playing and they're doing their thing. And I will say something like, you all behave now. And they know, oh, oh okay, and act white all of a sudden. And so that kind of code switching happens for many reasons. As Latinos, same thing when we switch to English, to Spanish, or to what. And uh, young people, the younger you go, the more that code, switch, code switching can happen. This is a code switching when, hey, we have to fit, and I want to get good grades. Yes, I'm Latinx professor. I go home, it's like, no, that word doesn't work at home. So that's uh, part of the, the, the problem with Latinx. Lexicon, imperialism. We can, you can go to the extreme right, the extreme left of the political spectrum and find people who dislike Latinx greatly. In this case, it could be the extreme left. They say, no, it's uh, uh, lexicon imperialism, even it erases feminist movements of the 70s. We fought so hard to use the term Latina, because everything is Latino, Latino, Latina, and now we do away with it because we lose it, so they don't like it. Mm, yeah, Latino and Latina, Latina and Latino studies, by the way, it's not the Latino studies, it's not the Hispanic studies department of Northwestern University, it's Latino, Latina first and Latino studies. So that's their department. Here's my little case study. A couple of years ago, I had the, the honor, the privilege, you know, I served on several, on many boards, Hamlet University, board of directors, board of trustees. I always have some kind of board service going on, which I enjoy. I joined the board of directors of Afton Press, beautiful, small, non-profit publishing house, beautiful coffee table books, Minnesota art, Minnesota history, very connected. I'm, I'm sad they are not here. Uh, we get awards from them, uh, from uh, uh, the Minnesota Historical Society. And we have this book coming up, Latin Art in Minnesota. There you go. This works. We talked about, so we say Latinx. Is it Hispanic art? Latino art? Latino slash A art in Minnesota? This is going on right now, and this is the way we're dealing with it. You know, we, we, use, we use Latin, when, and this is the, the editorial voice, is we're talking about Latin art, the Latin art scene. People understand what it is. Nobody thinks we're talking about uh, the Rome and the emperor, you know. This is Latin art, that's it. And we feature several, you know, six emerging and six established artists in Minnesota. We had a great curator to work on that. Uh, who curated some of the greatest art exhibits and, and, and uh, art uh, collections that I've seen in the last 10 years. So something like current, many artists will say I curate, but this is a curator, so that's what we want. Okay, you go to specific people and they will say things like uh, Chicana uh, identity, uh, immigrant, Cuban refugee, and um, Indigenous identity, about me and my work, Mexican imagery, Mexican paper cutting, Luis Fitch, a friend of the conference, Mexican identity, Mexican essence, American reality, Latin American diaspora. There are many ways to refer to the collective, and that's fine. Each person has their own voice, but this is working. And now the 10 seconds of commercial, we are now finishing editorial work. We're going to start production work publishing early next year, and uh, we are, this is an excellent opportunity to have your logo, your message, your brand, 
your name in this fine publication. So it's a, it's a good opportunity, actually. You know, I'm just kind of joking, but really, it's a, you can email me for that. By the way, also, if you want to get more information on these things, grab a business card. It's right here under the registration table next to the birth bags. And uh, here are some pitfalls. And this is just one quick one that I want to mention. Check out at the top. This is Nielsen, nielsen.com slash whatever slash Latinx. Hispanic, Hispanic, Hispanic diverse in the Hispanic community, his Latino population, US Latino community, Hispanic, whatever, Latino, Latinx, uh, Afro Latino, Asian Latino. What is Latinx in copy here in the editorial comments? Uh, you have Latinx up there. So you could argue that, uh, well, you know what, this is a mistake. Because if, if, if this is, oh, the future is this, but we cannot choose it yet. You can just do a mirror site and have their show Hispanic or whatever. That would be the right one. In this context, for this page, what belongs up there is Hispanic. That URL is wrong. Uh, and my, my feeling is somebody pulled the trigger too soon and then, oh, shoot, no, it's too controversial. Let's not choose it in copy. Well, you're stuck with that URL, but they should just do a mirror site and, and, and change it. Here we go again. You know, Latinx URL and then this. So that, those are the things to, to watch out for. Don't jump too soon, don't commit, don't file, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't get a domain, or, or, or maybe you do get a domain. Okay, here we go. People ask me, okay, you're, uh, that, that's my, my website, and I'm Rico Latino, <laughs> that's my stage name. Well, are you going to change it, ricolatinx.net? And I go, no, because I am, my pronouns are he, him, his, and so I'm Latino, and so Rico Latino works for me. However, would it make sense for me to buy that domain? Yes. Hmm, sure. you buy I did, I did. <laughs> so, you know, you never know. Here are the answers, is Latinx a thing? Yes, it is, to Latinx or not. Know your market, know your options. And now you know a little bit of more of the, of the options, and you have to know your market. Where are they? And generational targeting, that is huge because in which decade of life they are, uh, that dictates a lot of their values, a lot of what may, will make them tick, and how will they will react or use to Latinx. Maybe you do want to attract some people and ostracize others. That too, you know, but anyway, that's the way it is. So, thank you. Thank you. Bon appetit.